When I think back to the 70s, there are a number of actors and actresses that just really seemed to define the era. And this dude, well, he was absolutely one of them. My first recollection of Paul Michael Glazer was not actually the TV show that he is so well known for. Instead, it is a movie that I think most of us have seen. I will talk more about that at the end of this video, but right now I want to talk about Starsky and Hutch. Man, I really loved that show. The title characters were two Southern California police detectives. Glazer played Starsky, a U.S. Army vet from Brooklyn, and David Soule played his partner Hutch, a more quiet and reserved feller from the Midwest. Using the radio call sign Zebra 3, they were known for tearing around the streets of fictional Bay City, California in a super cool bright red Ford Grand Torino. Back in the day, it seemed like I compared every car in TV shows against the ultimate vehicle, the Batmobile from the 1966 TV series. And you know what? That Grand Torino was just about as cool. From the get-go, I thought this show was awesome, and it was a show that everybody was talking about in school, and for that reason alone, I knew that I had to watch it. Over the course of four seasons, Glazier and Soul became great friends, as well as entertaining the American public. And they remain friends to this very day. And as time permits, they make appearances together and truly seem to enjoy each other's company. I've got to say that I absolutely love it when guys like Glazier and Soul embrace their past. Too often actors and musicians want to shy away from what gave them the greatest fame in favor of whatever their current project might be. While both of these actors continue to get work, neither of them have ever turned their back on the fans of Starsky and Hutch. But I'm getting way, way ahead of myself here. Because you see, I also want to mention that way back in the 70s, Mr. Glazier, well, he was something of a ladies' man. No surprise, I guess. After all, he was a pretty darn big star. Depending on the magazine, he was either dating Cher, Farrah Fawcett, or some other well-known Hollywood starlet. However, that all came to a screeching halt when he met this lady. The love of his life. Yep, the minute that these two connected, it was game over. And the magazines, they loved it. Neither Paul or Elizabeth were ever camera shy, and because of that, it was quite common to find articles about them in all of the major tabloids. You know, the thing that I love most about these photos are the smiles. Particularly Elizabeth's. Looking at the photos, you can tell that these two really loved each other and that they were absolutely enjoying their moment together in the spotlight. It wasn't long before Paul and Elizabeth decided to seal the deal and get married. And over time, two became three, and then three became four. And from the outside looking in, it seemed like they were the picture-perfect happy family. And then this happened. Does anybody remember the sheer panic and mass hysteria that surrounded AIDS in the 80s? It seemed like every other day we were hearing about someone getting AIDS. At first, the headlines followed the widely prescribed belief that only a certain segment of the public were at risk. But then, all of a sudden, it seemed like there were new cases that defied explanation. In particular, I remember hearing over and over about the girl who went to the dentist and somehow ended up HIV positive. And in Elizabeth's case, it was a blood transfusion after the birth of their first child that exposed her to the deadly virus. Even more sadly, she unknowingly passed the virus to both of her children. At first, Paul and Elizabeth wanted to keep their story private. Like I said, there was a certain amount of hysteria and panic that was associated with the illness, and I have to believe that neither of them felt like, regardless of how it was contracted, this was something that they wanted to share with the world. Despite those desires, however, we all soon became aware of their situation, and if anything, we grew to admire this brave family even more. If you are truly interested in learning in great detail more about their courageous fight against AIDS, I would encourage you to track down Elizabeth's book, In the Absence of Angels. While there's not a lot of science in the book, which is fine by me, by the way, there is a very intimate, heartbreaking and touching story that is guaranteed to make you stop and really reflect on what is truly important in this life. 
During all of this, Paul continued to find work, and over time he started to transition from acting roles to directing opportunities. An early directing gig that stands out in my mind were the episodes of Miami Vice that he worked on. Crockett and Tubbs were so cool. And those TV directing gigs, well, they morphed into full-fledged directing opportunities with feature films. I've never seen Band of the Hand, but a couple of other early efforts, The Running Man and The Cutting Edge, well, I count them among my favorites. In 1988, Paul and Elizabeth's deepest fears were realized when their daughter Ariel passed away. By 1991, Elizabeth and Paul, well, they were channeling all that pain and grief and became active crusaders trying to help people better understand the impact of AIDS upon children, something that the population at large didn't really understand or know a lot about. And along the way, they were doing their very best to create an environment of empathy and knowledge instead of the stigma that, for whatever reason, seemed so very difficult to shake in the public's mind. And sometimes tragedy begets tragedy, and in 1994, Elizabeth passed away as well. As you might expect, first the loss of a child, and then losing the love of his life, well, it hit Paul tremendously hard. I have to believe that there were moments when he asked himself, why is this happening and how can I go on? It would have been so easy for him to wallow in his despair. But you know what? Paul Michael Glazer did not. Because you see, Elizabeth had been a great example for him. Despite the immense adversity that she had been confronted with, she'd never given up. A perfect example of that is the foundation that she helped start that bears her name. I absolutely love what it says on the Foundation's website about Elizabeth and her story. It says that the Foundation originated from the most powerful force of all, a mother's love for her children. And equal to that is a father's love. And Paul, well, he was able to lean on Elizabeth's great example and draw strength from it. And because of that, he doubled down on his efforts. And even though Paul did remarry, the spirit of Elizabeth never left him. And I truly believe that millions of people have benefited because of that. Even today, decades later, Paul continues to act as honorary chairman of the foundation that bears Elizabeth's name. And that's because Paul believes that there is value in telling the story. Why? Because there are many people out there, including myself, who get value from hearing about how he dealt with the immense grief that accompanied the chain of events brought on by Elizabeth's AIDS diagnosis. Despite the pain, he had to find a way to continue on and not let the tragedy define him. And one of those ways is that Paul occasionally still shows up on TV and in movies. Whether you like it or not, his cameo in the movie adaptation of Starsky and Hutch was fun. And appearances on TV shows like Third Watch and Criminal Minds and even more recently Grace and Frankie well, they remind us how immensely likable Paul is when he's on the screen. And it is also very well worth pointing out that Paul has become an in-demand artist. He describes his work as sometimes humorous and sometimes painful. To quote the man himself, he says, to experience both takes a person to the edge of whimsy. I like that. What a wonderful way to describe art. All right, I promised up front to share where I first saw Paul on screen, and this is it. Good old Fiddler on the Roof. What a great musical. Yep, I can hear Topol singing if I were a rich man in my head right now. Okay, now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section. And while you're at it, I would love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I'd be honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television. Mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always... Thank you so much for watching.